So now we arrive at the land of really, really extreme red eye. Really extreme red eye is a big problem for you because your trusty red eye correction tool is not going to help you one little bit. I'll just show you why not. I'll just open up my red eye tool and I'll go down to this rather nasty looking orange eye down here and I'll click on it. Yuck, look at that. It doesn't correct it or even get close. You just get this nasty looking grey film with a little black dot in the middle of it. I'll just undo. There is a reason for this and it's worth understanding why this is happening so that we know the right way to correct it. If I go to my channels palette, which I have open over here, and look at the red channel, as always, the red channel looks awful. There's that very strong grey-white film in the pupil of the eye, causing the red for the red eye. But when I go to the green channel, expecting it to be nice and black, I'm presented with this. It's got a grey film in the pupil as well. The blue channel also got a bit of grey film. The reason for this is that the red eye isn't really red. It's in fact a shade of orange which uses green and blue mixed together with the red to produce this colour. Net result of all this means that you can't use channel mixing and you can't really use the red eye correction tool to correct the problem. So what can we do to fix this? What other tools do we have that we can play with? Well, the one I recommend for fixing this type of problem is the colour replacement tool because we can see as we're correcting the image how it's going to look. It's not the best result possible, but it certainly produces a very good quality result compared to the starting image. Now I'll zoom in on this affected eye. I'll just position it and I'll take the elliptical marquee tool and I'll mark in the affected area ready for repair okay and I'll open up my replace color tool which you'll find under image adjustments replace color now from the replace color tool this is really neat how we work with this. We first use the eyedropper tool to select the colour shade to be replaced. Remember we're trying to get this to be a black pupil so I'll click on that orange tone and it's selected. We see a small preview of what we have currently selected, how many tones or shades of this particular colour are currently active and we'll get to work straight away. I'll take out the saturation so there's no colour at all and we instantly get some feedback. I use the fuzziness control as a fine tuning tool to increase the range of colour shades that surround our originally chosen eyedrop colour. Now it doesn't quite get all of them so I need to use the second eyedrop tool which is the add to sample tool so I'll just choose this little bit of red tone there and I'll use fuzziness again to see if I can now fine tune it to take out all of the different shades. It's very close. Uh, I think maybe we'll just take out one more red shade and then adjust fuzziness one more time. And I think that's good enough. Okay, so we've got the saturation down, we've taken out the red, but we're still stuck with this grey disc. Now we go to the lightness control. Pull down the lightness, not too quickly, and look at that. Very neat. Takes out the grey disc, even keeps the little reflection highlight, because remember, we're only replacing the colour shades and the fuzziness control for those shades. The original white highlight is retained, so this is very, very handy. Take that down. Not too far, you only want to take it down as far as is necessary. If you go all the way down to pure black, it may not uh, gel with the rest of the image. So try not to go too hard in with it. We'll say about there. Say OK. And I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see how this looks. And I'll just hide my selection marker. And that's not too bad. The final thing that you could do to this, and I'll just return my selection marker so you can see it, is you could use the levels tool just to fine tune the lighting of this pupil. Remember when we use the lightness control in the replace color tool, it's very much yes or no, light or dark. With the levels tool, we have a much higher level 
of control. So I'll just hide that selection and I'll use my image adjustments levels tool which I'll just drag over and I'll now fine tune using the light and dark at the bottom. We don't use this one very often because this is really a basic brightness and contrast but this helps to just lighten up the blackness and then I tend to use the mid-tone slider just to fine tune that a little bit more. And by fooling around with these tools we can nicely tune in the colour of the pupil so it matches the rest of the image. Say OK and I think I'd call that repaired.